Guess what time it is? It's tea time. So pause the video, run and get your tea, and come on back. We got a month to go through. Okay, I have all my notes. You ready? <laughs> First of all, Brenda Weatherly and Autumn Prepper. I can't answer your comments. You haven't turned on the ability for others to reply to your comments. So you have to go into Google Plus. There's this whole list of things you do with it. And that makes it so that people can reply to your comments. Uh, just, you know, PM me or something and we'll, wa we'll walk through how to do it. No problem. But Brenda, to answer your question, I do live in northeast Georgia. The, the clay is red because there's a lot of iron in it. And when I first came and tried to dig a garden, and if you look at last year's <laughs> video, I mean, I worked at just digging a little area, very small and it was almost impossible. So what I did is I put down cardboard and I put straw on top of that and pretty much left it all winter long and through the rains and the snows and everything else. And this year I've been, you know, digging out to plant stuff. That soil is so beautiful and I can already go down a little over a foot in most areas of my garden. So it has worked out fantastic. So if you have crappy soil, hello, that's how to do it. I have found so many earthworms that once in a while I'd chuck one to the chickens. They loved it. <laughs> they would fight over it and run around. <laughs> so now they all hang around at the sides of the fences waiting. <laughs> they can't have them all. Um, so yeah, it's conditioned the soil really well. Okay, the videos. I got a lot of response from rabbits and yarn. Um, I'm so thrilled. The rabbits are now mat free. Oh, so grooming goes really fast. And I'm getting better at grooming them. Um, and I cut their little claws. It was so hysterical. I watched something on, and I'll try to find where it is. So if you have bunnies and are worried about cutting the claws because of hitting the quick and stuff, um, I'll show you, gr I'll, I'll, I'll link to it, I promise. I'll try to remember. I didn't bring a pen. I will try to remember though. And um, what it is, so funny. You have the bunny up against you, and they'll sit there like, eh, and you just kind of tease their little foot out, because you roll them towards you. So the far away foot, you pull out a little bit, just tease it out, and it just sits there. And you take the clippers, and you say one, two, three, and then clip. If there's any reaction, you're going too far up the nail. So just move down and do it one, two, three again. No reaction, go ahead and clip. It's hysterical. So the other foot, you lean forward, roll them over this way after tucking that foot back in, and tease the other one out and do the same thing. Occasionally, their foot says, so funny. You just put your finger on it and stop. <laughs> They're funny. I've never had rabbits. I think it's hysterical. But it's, it's really an easy way of doing the claws. Uh, Kinleys were actually rolling up. Oh my gosh, it was awful. And I still have more work to do on hers, but I didn't want to take too much off all of a sudden. So I've been doing that. And she's walking nicely, well, hopping, whatever it is. <laughs> better and she's more comfortable so yeah they were not unfortunately the girl just did not have the time for them you know so that's how i ended up with them and it's wonderful um i have learned however that i need an apron <laughs> i have a um a, a pattern for an apron that somebody sent me actually it's very cool um, and as soon as I have a minute, I'll do it. <laughs> um, Heather.
mother if I had asked if I had to groom him on a daily basis. No. I groom him about two or three times a week. Um, or I try to. <laughs> Once a week, a lot of times, because it's been pouring. Did I miss the memo? Anybody who lives in this area, did I miss the memo? Was I supposed to build a boat? It has rained for two weeks solid. My plants love it, so I can't complain too much. But I miss the sun. I really, I really, I miss the sun. It's supposed to be really bad tomorrow. Oh, God. I mean, it's nasty. But, like I said, the plants are loving it, so, you know, you can't complain too much. The bunnies, however, are like, ooh, my fur's sticking to me. <laughs> Girls. <laughs> and I, as a matter of fact, I might go ahead and shear the girls for the heat of summer. So around June, July, I'm going to just take their fur off of them, poor things, and let them get through the heat of summer. And when it starts cooling off, their fur grows back fast. Whew. So anyway, I'm sorry. It takes, um, the grooming takes about five to ten minutes. I mean, just once the mats are all out of it. And, like I said, two to three times a week. It doesn't take much. As far as, you know, grooming my dogs and cats and stuff, I, I just don't have the patience. But these bunnies, there's something about all that wool. It's so wonderful. I love doing it. Um, D Star 945 and Pedassian Hippie asked if rabbits need to be bathed. No, they take care of their own bathing. You know, they're kind of like a cat. They're very fastidious. Um, but they do get mats because of their wool. Regular rabbits, like meat rabbits and pets and you know, whatever, they don't have all that. <laughs> so, but yeah, they do. They take good care of their, you know, their their cleaning and their stuff. And yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty good. Debbie M wanted a video on using the spindle. You got it. <laughs> um, and I, I'm getting used to using it. But I'm really bad at it. So what I have is art yarn. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. Um, I am working on a spinning wheel design. Um, as soon as I, <laughs> I perfect it. And it works. <laughs> Which I just got wheels, so. Um, as soon as I can perfect it, um, I'll probably be selling plants and the wheel itself. That would be cool. I have a little bit of something. That would be fun. Yes, Tilly, I know. Miss, Miss Shy cannot stand herself. She is now in my face, rubbing against me. I don't know, just all of a sudden she's gone nuts. And they rip their fur out this time of year. My mother's two cats. They rip their fur out for some reason. And I mean, Logan looks like he's moth-eaten. He looks terrible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on him. Um, okay, off with the cats. Um, Angela asked if Dustin, my buck, because he's at the top of the hutches, if he peed on my girls. Oh, he doesn't pee on the girls. I have a tray down there from my... Um, Heat exchange debacle. <laughs> yeah. So there's a tray. All I do is pull it out, take it over to my compost pile. It's clean. I love it. Um, Lucky Robin had some great advice on taming scaredy cat rabbits. Yeah. She says what she does is she sits next to the cage with like some knitting or some kind of handwork and opens the little door for the scaredy rabbit and sits next to it for about 20 minutes a day. That's all she does, just, you know. And of course, you know, I don't know about you. I always talk to my animals anyway. So you're talking away to them. And she says it takes about six to eight weeks and they're much, much better. And I will do that. I started doing that and the rains came and the rains came and the rains came. Oh, I'm drowning out here, nothing but mud. Stop, baby. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, and you can use cat and dog hair, any animal, really, um, and spin it into scars and hats. 
um, if you blend it like with a nice merino, um, it'll be stronger and you can make sweaters and that kind of stuff. But if you just want to use the fur that they're ripping out, <laughs> if you want to use the fur, then yeah, you can make little scarves or hats, something that doesn't get pounded to death like a, like a sweater, like well, most anything I wear, I don't know. So we got that. Um, um, Jay McDonald asked if I could use the mats or if it was, a w it was just wasted fur. You can't use the mats in spinning, but I make little stuffed animals, um, which I'll get to that. Uh, well, I, I plan on making more of them and selling them. But anyway, um, I can use that once I wash it because some people are allergic to the rabbit fur. And it's same as with cats. It's not the fur. It's where they lick themselves, and that dander goes all over everything. And pe some people are allergic to it. So once I wash it, would you stop? Once I wash it, then um, would you stop? <laughs> then I can stuff the bunnies, uh, bunnies and the teddy bears and all that stuff. So I can use it for stuffing, and it's very soft. And it's so but it's a mat, so it won't come out. It will have a nice halo effect, though. Um, so that'll be pretty. Okay, on to the next. Stop. I a lot with rabbits and yarn. Okay. Chores and update. On that one, the, the flower that I showed, with well, those little teeny red pinky balls around it, it is definitely an apple tree. I have no idea what kind. It could be a crab apple. I have no clue. But it is an apple. I've cleaned up around it and fertilized. I'm going to take some compost over there and put it around it. But, I mean, there was a lot of brush and crap around it. So I'm going to, I cleaned that out and I, I'm going to um, fertilize a little bit. I'm going to pull more on there and um, see what I get. I mean, even if it's not edible. That's fine, um, because what I hope to have is more apple trees, and um, then they'll pollinate, you know, and, and then I will have apples, and it'll be great. I need to plant the seeds, though. <laughs> that would help. <laughs> um, and I got a lot of questions on the egg hatch. My first batch of 13, only six are surviving and look I know it's user error it's it's it is me the second batch none there were no survivors again user error I'm sure it was me I'm learning this so yeah there's gonna be dumb stuff that happens but I have my six and they're all lunches babies so I'm happy about that they look like little vultures now <laughs> <laughs> they act like little vultures, actually, but yeah, they're they're cute. Oh, um, <coughs> excuse me. As a matter of fact, I'm planning on. I want to do an experiment. <laughs> I'm gonna put like six in the incubator that was given to me. It's gorgeous. I love that thing. And turn it on. Get it perfect. And then another one in this box that I made. And I use. I got this on online too. Um, it's a, you know you use a regular one of those tubs, and you put a heating mat down and put a cover over that, so it's always a constant temperature. And then do not drink my tea, thank you. Um, then you put the eggs on top of that. You mark them with the X and O, and you turn them at you know twice a day or so. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna see which one works best for me because. I'm such a klutz. I'm, I'm terrible. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. My story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Laundry soap. Yes! All right! I'll make powdered soap! <laughs> um, Mouth Toes did send a nice recipe. Actually, there was a number of them. Um, but that one is written. <laughs> And I'll put that down in the description box. Y'all have to look at the description box. 
because there's stuff down there. Um, so I'll put that recipe down there. And I asked the question about what's the difference between laundry, the laundry bar soap, and regular bath soap. And what I'm coming to the conclusion of is that there's more fat in this when making the soap for the laundry. There's more fat in it, which is a degreaser. Go figure. I don't understand it, but that is again my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Putting up the solar motion light. I'm gonna tell you something. That was not difficult. The worst part of it was moving the ladder. Now if that's the worst part, you can do it. It's not difficult at all. The hardest part was trying to figure out where South was. I keep forgetting. So <laughs> uh, so I finally put it up on the side of the barn. Man, that thing was great. I mean it's not bright screaming light, but it's I mean it's just enough. You can walk, you're not I'm not tripping over everything. Um, which, you know, I leave stuff around. <laughs> Such a slob. <laughs> But I'm not tripping all over myself, and I can get in and out. It's wonderful. And I still haven't put up the electric ones. Yeah. So i got to do that. All right, fine. Um, I'm still trying to get my yard light turned off. Um, they say they have to have a bucket truck. Now, when I first said, okay, I want my light turned on, bang, that day it was on. This woman says, oh, we have to put out a ticket. They have to bring a bucket truck. I'm like, you better bring something with a very long arm because you're not getting past my garden, my barn. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. So I'm still working on that, but I told her I don't want it. And that's that. Um, and the last one was seeds, plants, and fun stuff for us. National Livestock Day. Yay! Um... It is going to be on Facebook and on YouTube. So, if you're on Facebook, just go ahead and send the pictures. It'll be May 1st. Like I said, I'm going to give you a two days head up to remind you. Um, so, get those pictures ready. And um, what I'll do for YouTube is a montage of all the pictures of livestock and people's you know names or handles or whatever. Um, so the folks for um, YouTube, if you don't use Facebook, you know, whatever, email them to me. Email's down in the description box. Um, and it's also right there, wherever I put it, there. Okay. So that'll be fun to see everybody's livestock, which, you know, whatever. Um, okay. Now, I put it out there as to who wants what. Man. It was running neck and neck for dehydrator clothesline, clothesline dehydrator. And the winner is the clothesline. <laughs> the clothesline of all things. Yes, a couple of people are um, talking about needing to put one up. And they need some ideas and stuff. So that will be the first one. I hope I can dig the hole. <laughs> I think I'll be able to handle that. So. Um, yeah, the clothesline wins, but don't worry. I'm going to be doing the dehydrator too. So I just figured, you know, which one would be first. So if the clothesline, it wins. And yes, Hel Ellen, I am working on the goat pen. I'm getting a goat. Whether I like it or not. I, I just, I'm on the fence with the whole idea, but, but I really love the idea of getting this one male goat. Um, he's, I'm, I'm going to train him. I'm a dog trainer. I'm allowed to train everything, including my cats and, and everything. So I'm going to be training him and I'm going to be making um, stuff so he can pull for me because my dogs are useless. And um, as far as pulling, <laughs> something pulls on them and they look back like, oh, I'm sorry, you have to take that off. <laughs> but I think I can train the goat to pull. He's a Nubian Alpine Kilo Cross. And they crossed him because of hoof care and 
resistance to disease and stuff, which is fine. So he's not a teeny little Nubian, but he's not, you know, humongo. So I think he'll work out pretty well, but I've got to put the fencing up. Yes, that is upcoming. You can see me struggle with that too. <laughs> Back to the ladder. Um, so I think that's everything. Gosh, this one went fast. Well, anyway. Um, so I hope you enjoyed having tea with me. I know I love tea time. If you have any questions or comments, you know, leave them down below. And um, just, you know, anything. You can find me on Facebook. That's down in the description box. Um, I also have an Etsy shop, which I'm going to add to it. I know I keep saying that, but I am going to finally add to it. And I also have a GoFundMe account, which people are starting to use, um, like Blake Kirby, um, a couple others. They're using Patreon, and I'm not sure which I should use as GoFundMe or Patreon. So if you have any ideas on that, let me know. Um, also, what else? I think that's it. Gosh, it was great. I enjoyed having you over for tea. So um, I will see you later in another crazy video around here. <laughs> this has been Mel with One Woman and Two Acres. Y'all have a blessed day.